We got the backstory, and um, you know, you stayed down until you came up. But we, now I want to. I'm interested in the come up. So, all right, you stayed in, in in your mom's crib for nine months, no haircut, just walked the dog, just on some real Will Smith pursuit of happiness, <laughs> just, just figuring it out. Right. All right. So what happened? Like you just had like a, an epiphany, and it's like I got it. Like what? Can you explain me how you woke out of that darkness and yeah. and reemerged to the sunlight? Yeah. So when I went out of business with the box trucks, um, my sole purpose of my, my research was to identify what I did wrong and apply the correct information to my operations. And the first thing I realized is like, yo, I need to get the uh, 18 wheeler. Like the box trucks is cool, but the 18 wheeler is gonna definitely like open up my options now. And it was so funny because when I would be on the low board with the box trucks, I would have to um, do the search for 26 foot. Right. I can only look for lows that would fill up to 26 foot of right. a trailer. But I would just sometimes just get curious and like, hmm, let me see what the 18 wheeler loads look like. So it'll be like 80 loads available for box trucks, but 4,000 loads available for 18 wheelers. Yeah. And I'll be like, man, like them 18 wheelers is eating. So that was the first thing I, I realized during my research is like, yo, I need to get an 18 wheeler. So when I got the 18 wheeler and I started rolling with that one, it was like night and day. It was like night and day. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I learned how to negotiate. I learned how to read the market. I learned how to position my trucks. So you said that before as far as, all right. So just to get the first 18 wheeler, did you finance that? Did you lease it? How did you? How my did you? first 18 wheeler, I was able to get that for really cheap. Uh, this dude that I know, he was going through a divorce. And uh, I think his wife was trying to take everything from him. He was like, yo, just give me a price. <laughs> um, I, I literally paid about $7,800 oh, for wow. the first. $7,800? Well, it was a how 19 How much does it cost, like, on average? Uh, for a good truck that, you, you know, that we recommend getting is going to be anywhere from fifty to 60000 and, and that's brand new or used? Nah, about 2016, 2015. All right, so yeah. a used truck. Yeah, used okay. truck. But you uh, always only But I got an old one. You only recommend used trucks, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Why? Because uh, a brand new truck is going to run you upwards of a hundred something thousand dollars, right? And it's going to get you the same um, results as a as a semi-used truck. You know what I'm saying? It's all about getting a truck that, um, you know, the warranty, you got a good warranty on it. It's inspected. And if you get you a really good used truck, it's going to get you the same um, results, but you'll be able to, able to you'll be able to make your money back. A so, lot so between forty five to sixty for a used one, fifty to sixty. Fifty to sixty. Yeah. Um, how's the financing on that? Is there a certain amount you have to leave down to get that type of job? Yeah. So it's there's different ways. So if you're an investor, right? If you don't have a CDL, by the way, I don't have a CDL. Um, never drove a truck before. Uh, don't plan on driving. Yeah, a truck. You're not trying to drive. <laughs> nah. Um, you know what I'm saying? I respect. That's why I got so much respect for drivers because I don't do it. Yeah. And I can't do it. So um, as an investor, you're going to put down an average of about 30% down, okay. right? 30% down is what I've been seeing for the last few years with, uh, you know, these uh, uh, banks at the actual dealerships, right? Mm -hmm. But there's different ways that you can come into the game. You can actually go through uh, the truck dealership, right? And if you go through that route as an investor, it's going to be 30%. But if you have a CDL, um, it's going to be a little bit less down, let's say around 15 or 20%. And the reason why it's less for somebody who actually owns a CDL is because the risk is a lot less for the banks. They're looking at it like, hey, look, if you're an investor, you don't have a CDL, you, you get a truck and you don't have a driver, there's a higher chance that you're going to default on your loan because your truck's just going to be sitting mm -hmm. versus somebody who has a CDL, they could actually just hop in their truck and go generate some money to pay their notes. So again, 30% is the average down on a $50,000, $60,000 truck for an investor. With no CDL and about 15 to 20% down is the average that I've been seeing if you have a CDL. We call them owner operators, dudes who own their trucks and operate their trucks as well. My the, what I recommend though, the best scenario as far as getting into the game though, is just having like decent credit and having relationships with your own bank. Mm. A credit union, for example, right? Some of these credit unions will finance you up to hundred percent, right? So you don't have to put um, money, a bunch of money down for the truck. So in those scenarios, you'll be looking at getting into the game about with about ten grand, because now all you got to pay for is your insurance down payment, um, your license, your DOT numbers, your tags, etc. Um, so that's the cheapest way to get into the game is getting financing directly from your credit union, just bringing them a bill of sales. Like, yeah. hey, look, this is the bill of sales. Can you guys finance this truck? You're gonna get a, you're gonna get the best interest rate through your credit union. And that's the best way. Yeah, I did my first like two cars to my credit union. Mm -hmm. It was just like they take the money right out your check. So it's Absolutely. like you never have to worry about it. And the interest rate, like you said, is a lot lower. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good reference. So you said as far as, okay, reading the market, what, what does that mean? 
reading the market, like, okay, so <laughs> trucking literally changes every week. Like literally every week, like Atlanta could be the hot zone this week as far as freight. When I say supply and demand, I'm talking about loads to truck ratio. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, yeah. like, for example, I think the last time I checked, Atlanta had about 3,900 loads um, and they had about 1,400 trucks. Right? Mm -hmm. There's certain uh, parts of the city right now. Wisconsin is one of them hot right now. Wisconsin had about, I want to say about 5,000 loads and like 800 trucks available in the last business day. What does that mean to y'all? There's supply a lot of demand. supply. You gotta, you're going to be able to charge a higher amount because it's not enough. It ain't enough trucks. It ain't enough trucks out there. So now we have all these shippers, all these uh, shippers that's fighting for trucks now. So what, what are they going to have to do to make sure that their load gets moved? Pay top dollar. That's where the negotiating power comes in at. So if you don't understand, okay, this week, Atlanta, Virginia, Tennessee is hot. I need to position my trucks up there. If you don't know that, you're going to miss out. And that's what I specialize in. I specialize in and know, and knowing where to position my trucks at to get that top dollar. Because all it is is connecting the dots. We're going from one city to the next city to the next city, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times what I was messing up at is I would just take the big, the best paying load going wherever, not realizing that when I got there, it wasn't no loads there, right? So I'm thinking like, okay, I'm, I'm about to eat on this $3,000 load, not realizing when I get to <laughs> Iowa, for example, right? I'm going to have to drive probably 500 miles to get to another good load. So now I don't put most of my profit back into the fuel tank to get to that next market. So it's not just about booking the load that day. It's about looking at where the load is going and what that market is looking like as well. So you said it changes weekly. How do you, mm -hmm. how do you know? Like, mm -hmm. it's like website. How do yeah, you keep I think yeah. You said something about trucks having seasons. Like, yeah. how, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, we got peak seasons. We got slow seasons. We got times where produce is, uh, is real high at that time. And, you know, like that's around April to like July is produce season. Okay. You know what I'm saying? The, the freight rates go up because it's more, it's more demand for trucks, right? But we have, we actually have um, on some of the load boards, we actually have a feature that shows you all the hot zones mm. in the whole country. Mm. So we can literally go on there and see what's going on in the market, mm. right? Anybody has access to those load boards, or you oh. have to, you have to have an active authority in order to have access. What, what does to that the mean? Board. Active authority. Your DOT number. Okay. You know, your DOT number is the number that's on the side of all the trucks. And you have to have that activated in order for you to uh, have access to that low board. So the general public just couldn't go yeah. on and, and look at the low board. They probably wouldn't even understand it even if they did. Nah. It's yeah. like reading Spanish. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's similar to like a search engine for like Travelocity. Like if you're traveling, it's similar to that. But if you just knew nothing about it, you would definitely need to um, get trained on how to actually operate with it. So is it, you have like a map in your office where you have like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go from Atlanta to Philly to New York, to Chicago, and this is gonna, like, how do you calculate the math on it to say, cause like you said, that's a good point. Like you might, it might be good money going to Idaho, Iowa, yeah. but now you gotta come back to Atlanta and you don't really have any other stops in between. So like, do you have a set idea? Okay, you need to hit at least five stops every, was it like 500 miles, something like that? Or you don't do more than 500 miles, like um, 50 miles, something like that? Or is, is that like a formula or? Well, um, whenever I book a load, and I brought a couple here, for okay. example, just okay. to show you guys, right? But whenever you book a load, um, it's important that you know how much money you're going to be making after the load is complete. So I just bought it, like the load. We're, we're doing a load right now as we speak. One of my drivers picked up a load yesterday, right? The load is picking up in Tennessee, in LaVerge, Tennessee. Uh, it picked up yesterday on the 20th, and it's going to Franklin, Massachusetts, delivering on Monday, right? They're paying me $2,400 for that load, right? So when I look at that load, I got to figure out how many miles is from the origin to the destination. So I did the math. It's about a thousand miles. So now I got to figure out how much fuel is it going to take for me to um, complete that load. So we're going to take the rate that the load is paying. So we have twenty four hundred dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I know that it's a thousand miles. So I got to figure out how much fuel am I going to need to get this uh, job complete. So we're just going to take a thousand miles. We're going to divide that by six miles per gallon because that's the average that each truck uses. Is it? Six miles? Yeah. Oh, that's man. what you get. Six, eight, eight miles if you got a good truck. But I, I'm just going to do worst case scenario, right? So divide that by six, right? So I know it's going to take me 166 gallons of diesel in order to complete that load 
from Tennessee to Massachusetts, right? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to times that times the average amount of diesel, the, the price for diesel, which is um, about $3.25 right now, right? So that's showing me right there. Out of that $2,400, I'm going to have to use 540 of it on fuel. Just to get there and get back. Right. So me personally, everybody pays their drivers differently. I pay my drivers a percentage, right? So I pay my drivers 20% of whatever that low is paying. So just remember that number right there. So we're going to do 2400 times 20%. It's $480. Remember that number? And then going up there, we got tolls. So um, I'm going to say I think going up there is going to be about $180 in tolls, right? So if we do $2,400... Minus, was it 540? 540. Yeah. How much was the uh, driver? 480. 40. 480. Minus 180 in tolls. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we had 1199 on the profit. That's your profit. That's my profit that I'll see on Monday. So yeah. she picked up the load yesterday. Drove this while I'm with you guys right now. My truck is driving right now as we speak. Yeah. Right? And by the time I wake up on Monday morning, um, it's, it's delivering um, at 7 a.m. She's going to deliver. By the time I wake up, I'll be able to get $11.99 in my bank account by 5.30 p.m. That's another thing about trucking that I love is that it's liquid. Every single day I'm getting deposits in, my, in our business account. You know, I don't got to wait 30 days to get paid. Yeah. Right? We pick up a load on a Monday. We deliver on a Tuesday. We get paid on a Tuesday. So at the end of the day, we have a factoring company. A factoring company is a third-party bank that literally purchases our invoices from us. Right now, my volume is so high, I started off at 3%. I'm down to 1% right now. So I get charged 1% to get paid same day, and they wait 30 days to get paid. Does that make sense? Yeah. Wow. Right? So, so when you talk about people who are, are in other industries like real estate or they do deals where they need finance, you know how attractive it looks to a bank to see daily deposits into your account? When I go to my bank, they harass me. Are you sure you don't want the line of credit? <laughs> no, sit there. You sure you don't want a line of credit today? Because I'm a I'm 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 a lower risk because they seeing that you got money coming in. That daily deposit coming in. Nah, that's dope. That's so crazy. all right, how do you um get drivers? Like what's the mm -hmm. process of that? Yeah, and that's the hardest part of our industry. Like I'm not gonna sit here and just tell y'all the good part, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If anybody just tells you the good part of anything, just run away from them, right? That's the biggest um, obstacle in our industry. Why? Because we're talking about the human factor right here. We're talking about people, <laughs> right? Personalities. Um, and with the drivers, they don't have to necessarily be the most polished people. You know, we this is an industry where we hire felons. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we you know, they don't have to have education. It is what it is, right? Um, so the thing about drivers is that this is a very challenging job. This job requires them to be away from their families. Right. This job requires them to be driving uh, at sometimes 11 hours straight in a day. A lot a drivers are only allowed to drive for 11 hours straight. Yeah. Yeah. They're allowed to be on duty for 14 hours. Okay. And they're allowed. To, and then they have to shut down for uh, 10 hours. Mm. Right. Everybody can't drive for 11 hours straight every single day. That's tough. Right. So I got so much respect for drivers, man. And uh, just shout out to, you know, to the drivers out there, man. Like the world would stop without y'all. You know what I'm saying? So um, I just got a lot of respect uh, for y'all. And that's why I treat my drivers really, really well. Um, my, you know, and we're going to get into the portal and all that with our train on. Um, but, you know, I know sites that you know, I go on sites and I um, I put out an attractive ad. That's the first thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I wrote it down, man. When I saw the ad, you were like, we're going to pay you more by accident than ever shorten you on purpose. And yeah. I was like, wow. That's not even on my ad. That's what I tell my drivers actually after I get them. But I tell them all the time because one of the biggest things when I'm doing these driver interviews, I'm like, yo, why did you leave your last job? Like, what made you leave? And 80% and of the time it's because their previous employee was, pl was playing with their money. Right? That's yeah. the number one excuse that I hear why drivers leave companies is they playing with the money. So I tell them all the time, like, look, I'll pay you more on accident before I short you on purpose. It's my honor to pay you. You're helping me feed my family. I don't have a CDL. I, you know, we both got a role to play. So I, I, it's my honor to pay you. And um, just treating them with respect. And I don't treat them like they work for me. I treat them like business partners. You got a role to play. I got a role to play. Your role is to make sure that that load gets there on time, right, safely, and, and communication. And my, and my job is to make sure that your truck is safe, it's operating correctly, 
the loads are there, and you get your paycheck. Yeah, one of the things you do with with your your trucks is you put extra equipment inside the truck just in the event that there is something that happens from a mechanical standpoint. Preventative I think maintenance. Yeah, is what it's called. It's not just about reacting when the truck breaks down. It's how can I decrease my truck's possibility of breaking down? You know, and 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 what I've shared with people is how I was able to decrease my breakdowns by twenty one percent in two thousand nineteen. This is little things that I've done, um, little 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 um, extra things that you can do to just help help yourself on that road. You know, whatever belts that your truck uses, right? We got an alternator belt, we got an AC belt. Just put an extra set of belt in, uh, extra set of belts in your truck, right? Keep antifreeze, keep oil in there, keep fuses, keep light bulbs, keep an extra spare tire or two. Right. Little fixes that can have you shut down for five hours waiting on roadside. If you already have the part there, it's going to save you some time and save you some money. Save you a lot of money. Right? Mm-hmm. They're going to charge you a bill yeah. just to look at it. So how do you... All right. So you have a truck. You have the whole operation. You have drivers and all that. But you got to have a product to move, right? So mm-hmm. is most companies like freelance or do you have set contracts with people long term is it a combination of both yeah. like how does that work so when you first come into this game you know the low board is pretty much your best friend at that point right when you when you, when you just fresh in the game you got to develop relationships mm-hmm. so the low board is where we started off at the load board yeah that's the website right? yeah that's the website and, and what's, it has, what's, what's it webs loadboard.com no it's dat.com d-a-t it's called we have the we have the dat board and we have truckstop.com okay Okay, those are the two big ones. Okay, so on this low board, there's brokers. Um, you know, these are the people who have the lows that we have to call and negotiate with, right? So what I did was, we just started. We just did good business, right? We we, we stressed being on time. We tra- We 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 stressed uh, delivering a good service. And what happened is, we would just be meeting all these different brokers every day from booking different lows in different cities. And then um, I, me personally, I, I ended up uh, doing this load that I really liked. But um, it was a load that picked up in Georgia and it went to Cleveland, Tennessee. And it was twice a day, right? You would pick up in Atlanta. You would go to Cleveland, Tennessee, which is right there by Chattanooga. It's like What's two hours for? away. Oh, two hours? Okay. Two hours away, right? And they was paying us seven fifty to go two hours away and back. And we was doing it twice a day, okay? So we was generating $1,500 a day going up twice, and I loved it, right? We, we did it for like a week. It was like this project they was working on, right? And then I looked at the numbers that week. I was like, yo, this is dope. So I hit the um, broker up, like, yo, how often do y'all do these, these lows? He was like, man, it's funny you ask that, man. We just got an extension on this project. We're going to be doing this for the next <laughs> nine months. Wow. Right? So I'm like, wow. He was like, yeah, you know what, man? We, put, we had like about five different companies on this uh, load. But y'all actually executed the best. Y'all communicated whenever something was a delay. You called me immediately. You let me know what was going on. He was like, man, would you, would you, you know, how many trucks do you guys have? Would you guys like to, um, you know, do this full time? At the time, I think we was at about five or six trucks. I was like, yeah, I'll give you all my trucks. And man, when I tell you, <laughs> this was 2017, we ran this load, we ran this uh, load for the, for the whole year, right? And that was the year I, re- I was able to level up on my cash. That was the entire business? It was just working yeah, it was with just this? That. Okay. Yeah, we, they was they was moving one plant from Cleveland, Tennessee to Atlanta. We was moving an entire uh, plant for a Fortune 500 company to Atlanta. That nine months ended up turning into two years. Oh, wow. And then then it ended up turning into nine years now. (laughs) How how profitable is is your business as far as like truck or or on average? Like how how much can a truck make? Um, Right now, and I like to under promise and overachieve, right? I don't like to give the high numbers, I like to give the low ball numbers, right? Um, with the way that we do it, each truck should be able to generate you anywhere from fifteen hundred to three thousand a week. Take home after all expenses are paid. That's with a truck that's not breaking down. That's with a good driver, and that's with a full week of work. We we don't see any reason why you should be able to at least take home about fifteen hundred dollars a week per truck. And of course, you can have multiple trucks. And yes, it's just a volume of, game after that. Dom, Dom yeah, it's a volume thing. game after that. That's how you got your trust, right? The first yeah. truck paid for the second that's truck. That's what I did. Then, yeah. Money management is how you is how you scale up. You know, I had to make a lot of sacrifices in the first couple of years. And instead of when I made my profits, instead of using the money and buying frivolous things, I would just reinvest it back into the company. I would reinvest it in new equipment. Right. Yeah. And then once once you jump up to four, five, six trucks, then the money, that's when it gets real crazy. You call that a fleet. <laughs> yeah. And um, you know what I'm saying? I said, Bill, I've been doing this, I've been doing this game for like what, six years now. And I just really started like 
buying stuff like this year. <laughs> Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I just started really like enjoying life and traveling. I made my sacrifice. I reinvested in my company. Right? That's the common that's the common theme for every yeah. almost every one of our guests. <laughs> almost it's it's funny you say that because literally we've had people from the music and just people from real estate, developers, trucking now. Mm-hmm. And the one common theme is exactly what you said. Like you got it's all money in. Like you gotta put the money in. And that's something that it sounds simple, but nobody wants to do that. As soon as you get profit, people want to live off that on some selfish, like just go to the mall and just ball out. And it's like, that's not how it works. And it's like, you try to explain that to people and they still don't understand. You got to pay your dues. You got to pay your dues, man. And, um, you know, like I said, this year I went and bought my dream car. I went and, you What's know, your car? Uh, the, the S63 Coupe. Okay. Ooh, yeah. I see you got the Mercedes pendant. <laughs> Did they give that to you? That, that came with it. That came with it. It's from but, Brooklyn um, for real, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> got the- <laughs> but yeah, man, you know, we, like we, we, I paid my dues. So like any success that I've seen, I'm unapologetic for it. Because I put in the work for it. Now nah, we saying? never apologize about making a profit. That's what we're in business for. You, you, you in a business like you said, it's a seven hundred billion dollar industry. Absolutely, and, and you're like honestly, you're the first person I know that's doing it. Really? It's so crazy. Can I tell you why? First black person for sure. You for just, damn you, sure. You just hit on the head. <laughs> we, we are minorities in this industry. We're minorities, yo. Let me tell you something. I went to Louisville, Kentucky. We, it's this big truck show that they do every year in Louisville, Kentucky. It's called a Match Truck Show, right? Um, thousands of people. I mean, they bring these trucks. It's like tricked out trucks. Um, they got classes there. It's the biggest convention in the trucking industry, right? Every year. I went there last year, and I'm walking through the crowd, y'all, and I had a couple of my students with me. It was about eight of us, right? And we played a game. The game was how many minorities <laughs> can you find in this crowd? It's, 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 it's mind-blowing how much of a minority we are in this industry. And I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna tell, yo, they just messed up and let me figure it out. They should, messed up should and never let me in. They should have never let me in, but <laughs> they messed up letting me in. <laughs> My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>